In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a multilingual copilot in Microsoft Copilot Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a multilingual copilot using Copilot Studio. So the first half of this video, I'm going to focus on how to do it, and then I'm going to actually walk you through the details of how it all works. So let's start. Let's take a look first, and you'll see here that I have just a basic conversational copilot that I've created in Copilot Studio. Um, for this, I have made a minor change here so that you can see the language code is English here within this conversational agent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where you can actually edit this and add multiple languages. So if we go into settings and you go under the language preview, over here, you will see that you can add languages. So in the case of this one, what I've created right now is just a very simple um, a simple bot that allows you to order pizza. And if I just come in here and just to give you a quick demo of how it works, I can say order pizza. And once I go to, in to order pizza, it's going to ask me what toppings. I'll just select pepperoni, and I'll say that I want five. and then it's going to say that, congratulations, you've ordered pizza. Just very simple so that that way we can kind of see this and how it works. So I'm going to go back and kind of clear this out. And you'll see here that this is English. So I'll come in here onto the language preview. And for this bot, I'm going to say that I want to add Spanish. And you can see you can add multiple languages. You can check them all. You can search for the language you're looking for all of that. And so these are the languages that currently Copilot Studio supports out of the box. And we'll just go ahead and add Spanish. OK, so now Spanish has been added successfully. However, I haven't done any translation work on this. And you can see here that you have some abilities to remove, but you also have this button here. Now, this button is where you can come and you can download um, the localization file. Uh, in JSON or in ResX. For the purposes of this demonstration, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a JSON file. Now, once you download this, later in the video, I'll show you the details of, the, of these. But you, once you've uh, translated your file, what will happen is, in this case, I've already uh, a translation that I've already done for Spanish. And you come in and you connect that, and you just say update localizations. Notice that it's saying you're going to be overwriting uh, what's there. So if you're going to do this, make sure that you've got a backup of the one that you did. So like if you made a change, um, make sure you back up before and download it uh, before you uh, make the changes again. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this. And you can see here that we've successfully updated the language. Now, once I added the additional languages, you'll notice over here that I actually have a English drop down over here. And I'm going to change this just so that you can track it. But now if I change this and I go to Spanish, and we'll refresh this real quick. And you'll see here now where we are in Spanish. Hold on. We, there we go. Now everything is in Spanish. Just takes a second for it to load up. OK, so now that we've got this running in Spanish and my localization file has been put in, I can actually now talk to it in Spanish instead. And let's go through the ordering of pizza. So I'm just going to say this in Spanish. Notice that now all of my items here are in Spanish. And I'm going to pour. And voila. So that's how easy it is to be able to actually update your conversational agent to be able to be multilingual. OK, so now let's dive deeper into this and let's look at what actually is going on. There's a couple of things that you should be aware of, and that is that if we go back and I convert this back over to English really quick for you, and I go into my topics, remember that when my conversation started, here that I've got it where it's telling me this language code right here is English. Now how I went into conversation start and I created this and you'll see that there is a variable called user.language. And if you want to see where that is, you can come here 
and look in your system variables. And if you, you don't want to scroll, you can just type lang, and there you go. There's the language. So the reason I put this here is just so that you can see what is the actual language code that the bot has in this variable. And know that this is being set. A lot of times you can set this based upon different web browsers and things of that nature so that you get the right language code. And know that you can change that language code in the middle of a conversation and it will apply to the conversation because that variable is being used um, on the turns. So just be aware that this is where the language is actually being set within the bot is in that variable. Now, beyond that, what you can see is because I've done this, I've got it set here um, and I've made this where you can just see it. Now, you don't have to make it where you can see it. That's really up to you on what you want to do. Now, when we came in to the languages preview here and we saw this and if we you know, wanted to add a language, the first time you download your, your uh, JSON or your ResX file, what you're going to end up with is this, this one file that you'll be able to see. It's called localizations.json. And so you'll see here, here is the, trans, the actual language content of everything that is inside of this um, inside of this copilot. So if you go through it all, you'll see everything uh, in here. And this is what you'll use as your base file to be able to then make other translations. And, and this could mean that you wanted to download this file and make six different languages that you wanted to translate, or you could you know just take it and do one translation. Now, the way that you do that is I typically make a copy of this. And in this case, I made one. And then I said, here's all the different translation components of this. So I converted all of this to Spanish. You can use the translation services, for example, uh, um, like uh, the Microsoft Translator and translate this stuff if you don't know the language off the top of your head, uh, and then get you a base starting point. So pretty much across the board, you do this, you update it with JSON. Now a ResX file will look a little different. Uh, just to show you guys what that will look like, if I download a ResX file and then we open it, you're gonna see the structure of a ResX file looks a little different. And because I just downloaded this one is, I think I was on the English side, um, you can see here that these are, um, going to be in English. No, this is actually, I downloaded the Spanish one. So you can see here that I've got the Spanish translation. So if I wanted to, I can even go back, re-download the file, make changes to it because you're, it's a good chance that your conversational agent or your copilot is going to get updates to it. But this is the way that you can uh, continue to update it. And you can do this and check this into version control if you'd like. Uh, I would probably recommend that you do that. Um, Anyway, so once you've completed the translation on this and I come in and I basically browse and I upload it, just know that it's going to overwrite it. But again, if you ever want to download the latest version, you can just come and download uh, the localization file from here and you have what you need. And if you want to add an additional language, you can come in and just select an additional language that you would like to add. If you want to remove a language, um, you can also do that very simply. We can come in and just say remove. And once we remove it, you'll even notice that the UX will refresh. And voila, now we no longer have a drop down list. So I hope this has been helpful for those of you that are trying to build multilingual co pilots. Please uh, like and subscribe to my channel and definitely get into the comments and let me know if there's any suggestions for additional. Um, information or videos that you would like me to produce. Um, and always, you can go try Microsoft Copilot Studio by going to aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio. Thanks and have a great day.